Welcome to Winds of Change. We are joined today by renowned spiritual consultant Ruby Bedi. Ruby has been called a spiritual guide, mystic, psychic, counselor, and iconoclast, with over 20 years of experience in helping people on their own soul journeys. It is no doubt an honor to have her with us today. Thank you, GB. Welcome to the I show. I like the way you pronounce my name. Oh, Usually it's Bedi or something like that. So <laughs> Bedi. <laughs> well, the funny story is that in, I spent 10 years of my life in a boarding school in India, and our principal, was his last name was Bedi. And so we grew up with the Bedis, which okay. was really cool. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. Uh, Ruby, tell me a little bit about yourself. Huh. I was born in Delhi, New Delhi, and I um, came to... Canada in my teens, and um, what do you want to know about my spiritual journey? <laughs> yeah, like how, how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, it, um, I remember uh, my birth very well, and it started off, uh, oh no, it's a girl. Yeah. So I was the fourth daughter of a very prominent lawyer in New Delhi. So despite having um, everything there was this uh, fourth daughter is a bit too much for Indian families. Yeah. So those are the first words I heard, actually. Yeah. And right away, I thought, OK, I'm going to have to show them who I am. <laughs> like, I can't let them label me just as a girl. Uh -huh. So it was uh, age four. Uh, there's always this conscious memory. of It's a bit different from others. Mm -hmm. And conscious memory of uh, wanting to search, look for something. Mm -hmm. So at age four, um, <clears throat> I had another name and I went to school and told the teacher my name was Ruby. So <laughs> she said, that's not what it says on the list. I said, that's what it is now. Yes. So they told my mother and uh, my mother said, why Ruby? So I said, because it should be Ruby, because there's so many people, my friends are going to be looking for me later, yeah. and they'll know me by Ruby. So she wow. says, what friends, like, who are they? Yeah. I said, they'll come, because they will all find me. Yeah. So there's this conscious memory of always of um, wanting to, wanting more. Nothing was enough, yeah. and yet there was everything. So uh, very early ages, I was able to see beyond the physical. I could talk to dead people, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. I could talk to plants. I could talk to dogs. I could communicate. Yeah. And uh, there were no boundaries. But I always thought that this was sort of a natural phenomenon. To me, it was quite natural. Yeah. And uh, my father being um, a lawyer, and uh, he was a workaholic. Mm -hmm. So we had like clients coming at the house even at 11 at night. Yeah. And uh, I remember listening to his um, arbitrations and stuff. And I always thought as a young child, how easy I could solve this now. Yeah. I could suggest a better way. So it was always like I had a unique way in me. Uh -huh. But it was, um, I hated studies. I didn't think education has any value. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to do everything with shortcut. Uh -huh. So I picked up a mantra and I would actually not study all year round. Mm -hmm. But uh, towards the end of just before the exams, I would pick up like seven questions. I would just meditate and circle the ones I thought that would be, that would appear in the exam. And out of seven, I would get four. So I always passed well, but mm -hmm. all year I did not study. So everything was a shortcut and an inner connection. And Now, Ruby, so. you said something very intriguing. You said you remember your birth. Yeah. What yeah. does that mean? It was a conscious memory. I always uh, remember entering this world. I have that uh, absolute uh, clarity that I'm entering this world. It's not a happy world because for daughter, I upset many people. Yeah. And my mother actually never got out of bed. She was a nervous wreck after, you know. Yeah. So I was brought up by a Buddhist nanny because my mother couldn't uh, feed me or look after me. My mm -hmm. father was always busy. So, you know, it was, uh, there was always, uh, I knew that I'm born, but I just didn't know for what. Yeah. But I also knew that I should not mingle too much with others because I'll become like them. Okay. So there's always this memory that uh, as much as I like people, I can't be like them. Uh -huh. So I often say you can love your neighbor, but don't be like them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ruby, what do you remember about your childhood when you were growing up? Like, what, Say uh, children that went to school with you from grade one to grade five. If we asked them today what kind of a person you were, what would they say? Fun, happy. Um, it was quite easy. I did crazy stuff. Uh, I found things, lost items for my... I was quite popular because mm. I 
uh, had this, I didn't think it was a gift. I thought I was making up stuff at that time because any time kids lost something or they wanted something extra from their parents mm -hmm. and they weren't getting it, I would just program something. I'll say, I'll make it happen for you. So mm -hmm. I would take this little mud and just blow something in it. I said, see, I spoke to God now and it'll all be fine. And it would just be fine for them. So I was really popular because there were a lot of needy kids yeah. around. <laughs> and uh, school was, uh, I, I think it was fun, but there was always an inner uh, emptiness. It was like, for me, I was, uh, um, it was not pretense that was part of my reality, mm. but it wasn't really who uh, I was. It was something I could do. Mm -hmm. So I was very popular in school. I was, you know, yeah. I went to, I had a Buddhist nanny. I was born, my mother was Hindu, my father Sikh was Sikh, yeah. and I went to a convent, so I was taught by the nuns. Wow. So actually, I was pretty... Multi-faith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I knew exactly what words to use when, to take, <laughs> you know, to take advantage yeah. of the situation. <laughs> Ruby, what, so. what did you learn from your Buddhist nanny? What would be your top lesson? I think from her, it was like, I don't know, just being with her, it took me to her uh, home ground, which was uh, Tibet. And uh, she was way up there. And actually, I did journey to Ladakh after. But uh, there was uh, something about her that reminded me, that I felt uh, safe about. There was mm -hmm. a safety factor. It was like, uh, now that I can look back, I'd say she's probably part, part of my past, where maybe my past lives or something like that. But she reminded me of a culture, of a sentiment, of uh, emotion, not sentiments as such, but uh, a very laid back, sort of uh, just a very peaceful way. Mm -hmm. So in her company, my mother was quite neurotic, you know, yeah. but whereas this nanny was the center of peace and love mm -hmm. and just caretaking. That was a great role model. Yeah. Now, Ruby, as you were growing up, now we'll say within a uh, higher, like grade 10 to grade 12 or even through um, that era, that age group, what was that like? What was, the, what was your greatest learning in that period? A lot of uh, duality. I had uh, times when I was at the top of the world because um, I, I sort of lived the world uh, in my own way. Mm -hmm. So I could be with people, but I would be having inner uh, communication while with them. Okay. So I would have a party in my mind while I was sitting quietly with them. Yeah. So I always have my inner world. I never got out of that. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, but again, to me, it was kind of uh, quite natural that you could be with someone, but yet you could be with yourself totally and completely at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I learned to basically um, experience uh, multiple realities all in one time and space. Mm -hmm. And I could do that as a child, as a teenager. That saved me from going crazy mm -hmm. because uh, I remember I was quite suicidal at 15, 16, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really that I was sad but it was like um, what's next is yeah. this what they call home is this the family now are we supposed to be really happy mm -hmm. which I was because we had everything it was yeah. fun uh, extended family but there was something always missing mm -hmm. so this inner sort of uh, emptiness and uh, mm -hmm. always was pulling me with you know making me withdraw from everything mm -hmm. yeah when do you remember having that emptiness go away oh for um, not till 1992. Okay. Yeah, 1992, I experienced like a full-blown awakening, and I slept um, October 5th, 1992. I slept in one world, and uh, that's the only way I can say it. And uh, October 6th, 1992, I woke up in another world. It was a different person. So it has, uh, <clears throat> like it was a different reality. I had all these unique gifts that I never had before. Mm -hmm. I had them at subtle levels. I mm -hmm. was always intuitive. In order to even play those games, one would have to be intuitive. Of but course. I never saw them as, you know, mm -hmm. uh, intuitiveness or intelligence like that. But uh, this world was really different. I knew everything. I remember first thing, like somebody brought the paper and there was a murder in Calgary mm -hmm. and I knew exactly who had committed. I knew um, where the body was. So there was this deep intuition about everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was also a level of uh, heightened intelligence that I could see things from a very unique perspective. Mm -hmm.